In this video I am going to show you some details of one of the projects I am working on and I would like to hear from you about additional features you would like to see implemented in a possible future product. Welcome to the IOTT channels or and d -Lab. I am Hans Tanner. A special welcome to all new viewers and welcome back to everyone else. I am happy you made it here. The project I would like to show you today is a booster based on Arduino and the PowerShield hardware. Up to six power shields can be combined on one Arduino board, allowing for building a booster with up to six track outputs of 8 amps each. When I developed the power shield, using it to build a booster has always been in the scope of the project. But honestly, the priority was fairly low and in fact when a viewer asked me about my plans to come out with a booster, I told him not to expect it in the very near future. Now this has changed and here is why. I basically needed a testing tool for the power shield boards. Testing each power shield prior to shipping includes running track power at various load levels and verifying the current measurement on the analog port. To do that I could simply put the power shield on the DCCX command station and verify the track signal. But unfortunately DCCX behaves when it comes to measuring the output current as it allows only to set a trip current value. As explained in videos number 103, 4 and 5, more or less precise measurement of the track current on the DCC requires sampling at fixed intervals and then calculating the root mean square or RMS value. So I built a first prototype test device using a DCC interface to feed the DCC signal via growth cable into an Arduino Uno and the connected power shield. And I wrote a simple sketch for calculating the RMS value and displaying the current every second to the Arduino monitor. It worked nicely right away and while setting up this test station it dawned on me that this configuration basically is a simple DCC booster. And maybe, just maybe, I should make this a real product. To find out I started to think a little more systematically about potential features. The first thing to look into was the number of power shield boards that could be stacked on top of each other. The Arduino Uno has six analog inputs which limits the maximum number of current sensors and therefore power shield boards to six. The question was though whether the Arduino could read six analog ports frequently enough to calculate a meaningful current measurement. Doing an analog to digital conversion on the Arduino takes around 20 microseconds in fast mode and prevents the controller from doing other operations while the conversion is ongoing. Right now I am using the timer interrupt for sampling with an interval of about 80 microseconds which means that each input channel gets sampled about twice per millisecond. It turns out this is good enough for current measuring but it remains to be seen if this is fast enough for reacting in case of a short circuit on the track. If it is not sufficient, I have to reduce the number of power shields that can be stacked on top of each other. The second element to look into is how to treat the input signal. The common method of most hobby projects is using an optocoupler to achieve a galvanic separation of the incoming DCC signal and the power supply of the booster. Unfortunately, using an optocoupler has the disadvantage of creating an asymmetry due to the threshold of the photodiode. As you can see in this oscilloscope screenshot, both half bits of the original signal have a length of about 58 microseconds. When looking at the output of the optocoupler, we now can see that the asymmetry in the length of the two half bits is about 4 microseconds. This is not a problem when building a decoder, 
but when trying to build a booster which amplifies the signal, it can lead to an output signal that no longer meets DCC signal specifications. The better approach therefore is using a differential input, which gives a much better replication of the original signal timing as you can see in this oscilloscope screenshot. I used that approach already in video number 85 when working on the Red Hat PC board, which I wanted to make configurable to work either as command station or as booster. So I recycled that part of the original Red Hat design and made a modified DCC aux shield that can be placed on top of the stack and provide positive and negative DCC signals to the attached power shields. It can be controlled with a DCC signal between about 6 and 28 volts. The board can be equipped with Loconet connectors with DCC input on pins 1 and 6, or alternatively with an industrial plug to connect DCC from the track output of a command station. Here is an initial look at the modified board. It just arrived from the PCB manufacturer and I will start testing it soon. Then I thought about an auto-reversing option. Looking at the Arduino board, there is a total of 14 digital inputs and outputs. So far I use pins 0 and 1 for serial communication, pins 2 and 3 for DCC A and B, and 6 of the remaining pins for user-selectable assignment to enable or disable the output of each power shield. So I have 4 IO pins left, which means that up to 4 power shields could operate in auto-reversing mode. If they technically could do that, that is. I reviewed the power shield schematics and came up with a modified version that has an additional IO pin that can be used to reverse the output polarity. Similar to all other configurations on the power shield, there is now a new AR bar that can be connected to an Arduino pin and then the Arduino can actively change the polarity of the power shield track signal. So that's the current status and here is a summary of the features I plan so far. Up to six power shields can be stacked, allowing for a maximum of six track outputs with a maximum current of eight amps each. There is the possibility to use individual power supplies for each power shield, even with different supply voltages. Up to four of the six track outputs can work in auto-reversing mode to power reversing loops and the like. The differential input replicates the incoming DCC signal without changes to the bit timing. This means advanced features like zero-bit stretching and railcom cutouts can be supported. The board has input signal monitoring and auto shutoff if the input signal is missing or not conforming to DCC or PWM format. The maximum output current is user configurable for each channel. The outputs are overload and short circuit protected. The board has true RMS based current measuring and reporting via serial port. It also provides browser based configuration and real-time current display when connected to an IOTT stick. The stick thereby is optional as all configurations can also be done via serial port connection and a terminal program. Sounds interesting to you? Here is my question. What other features would you like to see implemented in this booster? Please post your ideas in the comment section of this video so that others can see it and add their own input. If you want to be among the first to see the next steps in this project, please do not forget to subscribe to the IOTT channel and hit the bell icon, so you will be notified when new videos come out. And that's it for today's video. I hope this information was useful or at least interesting for you, and you are motivated to submit your ideas and requests for new features to this exciting project. If you like this type of content, please click the like button below to let me know. Doing so helps to promote this video and the IOTT channel in general, 
as it tells YouTube to recommend this video to other model railroaders. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.